The Cossacks were a diverse group of free warrior communities that emerged on the frontiers of Eastern Europe, particularly in the steppes of modern-day Ukraine and southern Russia between the 15th and 19th centuries. Their name derives from the Turkic word Kazakh, meaning free man or adventurer, and this spirit of freedom defined their culture and politics. Originally formed by runaway peasants, adventurers, and frontier settlers seeking autonomy from feudal or state control, the Cossacks developed into semi-independent military societies that played a crucial role in shaping the political and ethnic identity of Ukraine. The Zaporizhian Cossacks, centered around the Zaporizhian Sich on the Dnipro River, became the most famous of these groups. They were known for their democratic governance, electing their leaders, the Hetmans, through councils known as Rada. The Zaporizhian Sich functioned as both a military fortress and a protostate, symbolizing freedom and resistance to outside domination. Over time, the Cossacks became defenders of the Orthodox faith and the Ukrainian peasantry against the pressures of Polish-Lithuanian rule and Catholic conversion efforts. One of the most influential figures in Cossack history was Bodon Kmelnitsky, who led a massive uprising in 1648 against the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. This revolt, known as the Kmelnitsky Uprising, led to the establishment of the Cossack Hetmanate, an autonomous Ukrainian state that lasted for over a century. Under Kmelnitsky's leadership, the Cossacks sought to secure political independence, religious rights, and social justice for the Orthodox population. For this video, I've gathered the raw genomes of two Cossack women dated to the 17th century AD from a study called North Pontic Crossroads, Mobility in Ukraine from the Bronze Age to the Early Modern Period. I used academic tools, such as Admixtools 1 and 2, but also tools developed by me, such as Mageplot, Trait Predictor, and BetaCalc. The first sample we will review, UKR-164, is a female carrying mitochondrial lineage H3A. According to Global 25, her closest populations are Central and Southern Russians and, more distantly Ukrainians, Belarusians, and Mordovians. According to this Mesolithic Padam run, the dominant ancestry component in her is the Eastern hunter-gatherer component, which she scored 33% of. She carries 29% Anatolian farmer ancestry, which is below typical for Eastern Europe, together with 24.4% Caucasus hunter ancestry, which is higher than what is typical for Eastern Europe. She is also scoring 1% Neo-Siberian. This Neo-Siberian ancestry in combination with the elevated Caucasus might suggest Turkic, Caucasian, or Iranian admixture. According to this QPADM model computed with Admixtools 2, she carries 39% Baltic Bronze Age, together with 49% Paleo-Balkan and 10.7% Sarmatian ancestry. It seems she indeed carries some exotic Ironic, Kavkaz, or Turkic admixture. She was predicted to have dark green eyes, dark brown hair, olive skin tone, kinky hair, Greek nose shape, and thicker eyebrows. She was definitely a warrior, had lower D2 receptor density, lower cardiovascular risk, lower empathy, higher odds of autism, lower odds of epithelial cancers, lower odds of autoimmune risk, lower homocysteine levels, average odds of obesity, was lactase persistent, and carried either A or AB blood type. She carried rare risk variants for open-angle glaucoma, familial hypercholesterolemia, and cleft lip. With beta-calc, she scored high for odds of breast cancer, hypertension, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, schizophrenia, skin cancer, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. She scored low for odds of alcoholism, anxiety disorder, autism, coronary artery disease, depression, heart attack, lung cancer, mental disorders, and ovarian cancer. Now let's move on to UKR165, who is also female and carries mitochondrial lineage U4. With Global 25, her closest ethnicities are Northern Ukrainians and Southwest Russians, followed by Central Russians, Belarusians, Poles, and Lithuanians. According to this Mesolithic Padam run, the dominant component in her ancestry is the Anatolian Neolithic farmer component at 48%. This is higher than what is typical for Eastern Europeans. However, her share of Caucasus hunter ancestry is low at only 12%. This is basically the opposite case of the previous individual. UKR-165 is strongly Anatolian farmer shifted with low Caucasus hunter and typical levels of European hunter-gatherer admixture. She also lacks Neo-Siberian ancestry. According to this Pata model computed with Admixtools 2, she carries 47.7% Baltic Bronze Age ancestry together with 22.6% Anetis and 29.7% Paleo-Balkan. This is a very typical result for East Slavs. 
This woman likely doesn't have any exotic admixture. She is predicted to have blue eyes, dark blonde hair, white skin, curly hair, and snub nose shape. She is predicted to be a worrier, to have lower levels of 5-HT, higher odds of autism, higher odds of cardiovascular issues, higher odds of epithelial cancers, lower odds of autoimmune disease, lower homocysteine levels, average odds of obesity, and decisively blood type A. She carried rare risk variants for APAP liver toxicity and FTAAD. With beta-calc, she is predicted to have high odds of anxiety disorder, autism, esophageal cancer, heart attack, hypertension, multiple sclerosis, skin cancer, and type 1 diabetes. She scored low for odds of bipolar disorder, colorectal cancer, coronary artery disease, mental disorders, Parkinson's disease, schizophrenia, serum iron levels, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. I also used my mage plot tool to analyze these two women's autosomal genetics further. For this slide, I used my MagePlot's divergent population modeling tool on a set of G25 coordinates which included the G25 coordinates of these two women. As you can see, the core components that make up the ancestry of these women are similar. For example, UKR-164, our first sample, can be modeled as 70% Kostroma Russian together with 26% Moldovan and 4% East German. We see a similar breakdown in Russians from Kursk, Voronezh, and Ryazan. UKR-165 is more similar to the rest of the samples because it also scores some check on top of Kostroma and Moldovan. We see here that these two samples fit in quite well among all the other Slavic peoples of Eastern Europe. You can purchase their genomes in 23andMe format from the link in the description. There you will also find links to my tools and services.